Let's look at testing a sensor. And this sensor can detect hidden explosives. And so we test it by hiding explosives in one of four identical boxes here. And in this video, we're going to talk about type 1 error and type 2 error, and this thing called power of the test. So we take our four identical boxes. Inside of here, we hide an explosive. By purely guessing, and if I randomize it each time, 25% of the time, I would be able to correctly guess which one had the explosives. But somewhere above 25%, if we would do this experiment a bunch of times, if we had this special kind of sensor, this magic sensor that worked sometimes, how many guesses out of 100 would you convince you that it is better than just randomly guessing 25%? Because I know if I just randomly guess 100 times, I'm going to get 25 right. Now, this sensor is not going to work all the time. But I want to know, is it better than just randomly guessing? And so think about how many guesses out of 100 you would want to believe to be that this machine is better than just guesswork. So if I had 26%, I would think it was still just guessing. It was just random chance. If I had 27%, it's probably still just guessing randomly. But where, if I had 100%, I for sure would think, oh, it can capture it correctly. How about 50%? If I had 50% of the time, this sensor was able to correctly guess the box, do you think it's actually working or do you think it's just random variation? Well, how about 40%? How about 30%? When does it change for you the idea that all of these, this device is better than just random guessing? That's what hypothesis testing is really about. And so let's make up a rule. And I'm going to say, let's say 35 times out of 100 or 35% of the time. And so what we know is if I consider this, what I've just created, this 35 is comparable to our alpha value, our level of significance. And if I think about our hypothesis testing, our null hypothesis would be that the machine does not work. That's the assumption, doesn't it work. So I know that the proportion, I mean the proportion is going to equal 25%. The alternative hypothesis then is that it does work. And so it is more than 25%. And so how much more? Well, we say if it's 35% of the time, then the device does work. That's what we've said. So I will, so let's consider this. So if this is my scenario, let's consider if I pretend I do this with 100 trials, and I'm going to say the machine correctly guesses it 40 times. Well, what are you going to do? Well, 40 is more than 35. And so that is going to convince me to reject the null hypothesis and support that it does work. And so I could save lives. So if this is true, what I'm going to do, and if I think about this as if it was a normal curve, if I think this was a normal curve, I have my normal curve. And it's, right, here would be my 35%. And this 40 would fall in here. This would be my critical region. It would fall in here. So therefore, if this was true, I would reject the null hypothesis and say the machine works, at least better than guessing. OK? This is what I've done. Now, what you don't know, though, is because I'm only telling you now, but this is the statistics you got. But what you don't know is the machine actually doesn't really work. No one has told you this, but magically it doesn't actually work. What are the implications of this? Well, we have incorrectly rejected the null hypothesis. It was in the critical region. In critical region, So therefore, I have made what is called a type 1 error. And that happens, alpha is the 
probability of a type 1 error. That is what that refers to as alpha is a type 1 error. And what does this mean in this case? Well, it means that I have trusted this machine and, and probably spent money buying this machine when in fact, when in fact, it does not work. And so I've stopped trying to make a better machine, and I've put money into it, I've wasted money, and I think it works, and it doesn't. That's the consequences of a type 1 error. And this time in my experiment, I had 30% correct guesses. Well, if I pretend it's a normal curve just to get a visualization, here is my critical region of 35, and my guess here was 30%. This time, I would fail to reject H0 and say the device does not work. Okay, that's what I would say here. I fail to reject H0, so the device does not work. But Let's pretend, just for argument's sake, that the machine does actually work. And we didn't know it, but we did our statistics and it did not work, or it does work. Okay, it does work. What are the implications of this? Well, then we have not used a machine, used a, uh, Explosive detected machine, detecting machine, when we should have. We had the ability to find bombs and we neglected to do it. This is what we call a type 2 error, when we incorrectly fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is a type 2 error. And so, in this case, we should have spent the money and we've overlooked the usefulness of this, this advice. That's the implications of a type 2 error. We could have saved lives by using this device, and instead, but in reality, we didn't. And so there's the implications of the type 2 error. Now, pretend we do another experiment but with 50 trials, and the ma machine guesses correctly 19 times, which is 38%. So again, if I think about my normal curve, here's my 35%, here's the critical region, and my 38% lands in here. So I will reject H0 and claim the machine works. Okay, we claim the machine works. Well, this time, I know you, the machine does work. And this is important. It does work. So we have correctly rejected the null hypothesis. Okay, the machine does work. We threw it away, and it was the right decision to make. This is the correct decision to make. We've not made an error. What does this mean? Well, it means that we are able to use a machine to find explosives. And this is what we call the power of the test. The power of the test. The, uh, I know that type 1 error is alpha. Type 2 error, we call that equal to beta. And so the power of the test is equal to 1 minus beta. They're intricately related. But this is what we want to do every single time. We want to correctly reject the null hypothesis. We want the power of the test to be large. We want success. And we want to reject the null hypothesis except the alternative hypothesis. So what happens here, right, is the truth is out there. 
And the truth says that H naught is true. H naught is true. Or H naught is false. We don't actually know the truth, but that is what could happen. But when I do statistics, I either reject H naught or I fail to reject it. Fail to reject H naught. If if I reject H naught and H naught is false, that is the correct decision to make. I am very happy to do that. If H naught is true and I fail to reject H naught, which kind of means I accept it or I think it's worthwhile information and it's true, that again is the correct decision to make. These are the things we want to have happen. However, if this is true, the H naught is true, and we reject H naught, that was the wrong decision to make. This is called a type one error. The probability of that happening is alpha. That is rejecting H naught when indeed H naught was true. The other possibility is if H naught is false, and then we reject H naught when we should, we do not reject H naught, and it is false. So therefore, it is a type two error, and this error has a probability of beta. This scenario here, where we correctly reject the null hypothesis, this one here, we correctly reject the null hypothesis, this is one minus beta. This is the power of the test. And we want that to be high. And so the probability of a type one error means the probability of rejecting H naught, rejecting H naught, given H naught is true. H naught is true. The probability of a type two error is the probability to fail to reject H naught given we fail to reject H naught when indeed H naught is false, meaning H naught is some other value other than what we had thought before. And so that is what's going on here. So it's really important to get a hold of type one, type two error, and the idea of this power of the test. And we'll do some calculations to calculate the power of the test in an upcoming video.